synchronizing the microbial clock, optimizing the interaction between the microbiome and circadian clocks. Overview. Throughout the other modules in this program, we've discussed the various circadian clocks throughout the body. We've discussed the master clock, located within the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the brain, which is regulated by light exposure, and the various other peripheral clocks located in all of the organs and tissues throughout the body. However, the microbiome also has a circadian rhythm, which makes dealing with the microbiome a lot more complex than what most people would have you believe. The microbiome follows its own circadian rhythm, but unlike the other clocks in our body, it's not our genome controlling this circadian rhythm. Instead, it's the compilation of genes that are found within the microbes inhabiting our gut. Thus, we're dealing with another layer of complexity here. So throughout this module, we're going to cover quite a few topics. We're going to discuss how the gut interacts with the numerous tissues throughout our bodies and how that requires synchronization of the microbial clock to our gut and these other tissues. We'll discuss specifically how the microbiome interacts with the gut by promoting gut health, altering gene expression, and the different metabolites which can activate the vagus nerve and help regulate the stress response. We'll discuss the importance of other Zeitgebers. They help lay the foundation for the microbial clock. You can't ignore these other Zeitgebers. You can't uh, ignore the other clocks. You have to take all of this into account because they will all affect one another. They are not operating in isolation from one another and addressing them in that way will not yield good results. the importance of metabolism. We're gonna really dig into that. It's been a common thread throughout the entire program, how you really can't get the optimal circadian rhythm without having a healthy metabolism. You certainly can't sync your master clock to your peripheral clocks or your peripheral clocks to one another. The same can be said for your microbial clock. Critically important that you do not have problems with insulin or blood glucose control. Uh, insulin and IGF-1 were identified as the food and trainable oscillator uh, recently, uh, 2000, a study in 2019. And basically what that means is they are the hands that make the clock go. So if you have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, you can absolutely forget about synchronizing any of your clocks, let alone the microbial clock. And in addition, the insulin is a really important signal for maintaining good gut health. So if you don't get that signal because you're insulin resistant, you can forget about synchronizing your microbial clock to your gut clock. We'll briefly touch upon the diet wars, carbs versus fat, keto, carnivore, vegan. I do believe most of these diets can be done in a healthful way. I do not believe most people are doing them in a healthful way for several reasons. There are several things found in your diet that I think are probably important, some to limit and others to increase. And I think as long as you're doing that, I think most of those diets can fit within the realm of what could be considered a healthy diet for the microbiome. We'll discuss inflammation in the microbiome. Just like inflammation can really throw off the clock throughout the body, it really throws off the microbiome as well. The microbiome needs to communicate with the gut in order to kind of work with the rest of the body. And if you have inflammation in your gut, you can forget about that happening. So what we really want to do is create the perfect environment. We'll talk about how you can do that. We'll also talk about dietary approaches to reducing inflammation in your gut, specifically in the colon. I don't think you can just take a diet or take one single lifestyle habit and get the benefits that you need to do that. I think you really have to kind of weave these things into one another. As I mentioned multiple times, it's a lot of it's about how you layer the Zeitgebers throughout the body in order to elicit that appropriate response. Timing means just as much as what you're doing. So I think that's important. We'll discuss on how how you can use that information to lower inflammation in the colon and then begin to kind of get your microbiome working for you, especially in cases of uh, inflammatory bowel disease. We're really going to dig into short chain fatty acids such as butyrate, propionate. Um, these are gut immune regulators and they are critically important to synchronizing the microbial clock to all the clocks throughout the body. They follow a circadian rhythm and in order to get that circadian rhythm, there are behaviors you need to do at the appropriate times and things you need to kind of not do, uh, that things that I've mentioned multiple times throughout the program. 
And uh, one of the most important things that, that you need to understand is that things that improve the circadian rhythm of one short chain fatty acid will improve the circadian rhythm of the other. These are reliant on one another. You're not going to tweak one without tweaking the other, which is great because you can kind of synergize what you're doing and get, you know, a double whammy out of it. When all is said and done to get the maximum benefit out of your microbiome, you absolutely need to synchronize your microbial clock to the rest of your body. In order to do that, you need to understand diet matters, meal frequency, meal timing, meal quality and quantity. You can even kind of break that up to the meal quality and quantity varies throughout the day as well. So it's not as simple as eat this many calories or, you know, just eat a keto diet or, you know, don't eat after X PM. You really need to take all of these variables and use them to your advantage. Most people aren't even focusing on more than one of these variables. So if you focus on all of them, you get a synergistic kind of like a cascading effect in that you get much better results the more of them you add in. Physical activity matters, what type, how much, I cannot tell you how many times this is one of the primary issues a person's having. And you know, when I mentioned physical activity, oh yeah, I exercise three or four times a week. Exercise and physical activity are not exactly the same thing. Exercise is a form of physical activity and it should not even remotely be the most important type of physical activity you do. We're gonna discuss that, types of physical activity and how much you should be doing throughout the week. And ultimately, timing matters. We're talking about a clock. Obviously, timing is one of the most important factors to take into consideration. So in order to get the maximum benefit out of synchronizing the microbial clocks to the rest of your body, the most important variable you're going to be manipulating is time. You're not going to, you, you're not going to necessarily get bogged down on whether you're doing keto, carnivore, vegan, or whatever. Um, you can use most of those tools provided you're getting adequate nutrition. However, when you start tweaking when, you're going to see amazing results. Finally, at the end of this whole thing, we'll have a plan to address all of the above. Again, there's not going to be a specific diet. There's going to be certain things you need to either be adding or subtracting from your diet in order to improve your microbiome and to synchronize your microbial clock to the rest of your clocks. The gut interacts with other organs. If you've been following the research, you've probably come across the numerous gut axes. There's the gut brain axis, the gut bone axis, the gut muscle axis, the gut skin axis, the gut liver axis, the gut immune axis, et cetera, et cetera. Number of axes that they discuss in, in the literature. But for these systems to work, a few criteria must be fulfilled. First, they must speak the same language. In other words, there's going to be signaling molecules created in the gut that can go to the brain and attach to receptors and vice versa. The brain creates signaling molecules that go to the gut and the gut contains receptors for these molecules. This happens throughout the entire body and some of these are conserved across all of the different tissues and others are, are only, you know, gut muscle or gut brain signaling molecules. They also must be synchronized. In other words, they must be on the same time. If the gut believes it is noon, but the bone believes that it is midnight, that's not going to work in terms of uh, these tissues working with one another to promote health. And finally, they may rely on other teammates. In other words, the brain may signal to another tissue that then signals to the gut and vice versa. In other words, the gut brain axis is not different than the gut bone axis. They're all communicating with one another. They may not all be using the same molecule. The gut may communicate with the brain with a different signaling molecule than it does with the bone, but the brain is also communicating with the bone. So they're all talking with one another. That's why synchronization of all of the clocks are important. Therefore, have to have similar molecules, have to be synchronized in a time manner, and they must rely on one another in order to get the job done. And we can't forget about our microbial organ because that microbial organ is communicating with the gut and it's secreting molecules that also communicate with these other axes within the body. The microbiome interacts with the gut. To really get a firm grasp of how important the microbiome is to our health, first it's important to understand just the, 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 the scope of how big the microbiome is. To date, more than 4,000 species 
have been identified that make up the gut microbiome. And this is just the bacteria. This is not taking into consideration the mycobiome, which are the fungi, or the virome, which are the viruses. Now, there are not 4,000 species of bacteria in yours or my gut. This is the total number of bacterial species identified in microbiome samples from humans. Now, within all of these bacteria, there are 12.6 million unique genes in your microbiome. These genes transform our food into metabolites and they help these bacteria signal with one another so that they can kind of team up and help themselves and additionally help us. These metabolites alter the gene expression in the gut. Additionally, some of these metabolites can get into the blood and they can alter gene expression throughout the body. For example, butyrate, which is one of the short chain fatty acids we've just discussed, is a histone deacetylase inhibitor. You don't need to know exactly what that is. What you need to know is it's altering gene expression. Now, just to kind of get a scope of the amount of genes that are in our microbiome versus in our body, we have 20,000 to 25,000 genes that make up our genome. So our microbiome has 12.6 million unique genes, which is crazy. So there are a lot more things can, that can get accomplished there. Thus, our microbiome synthesizes vitamins, alters the immune system, seals up the gut, creates neurotransmitters, gut hormones, and other biogenic amines, which are essentially amino, amino acid-based molecules or proteins that can signal throughout the body. You're probably familiar with histamine. That's a biogenic amine, as are the catecholamines. And we've just scratched the surface so far. I'm sure as we get deeper into studying the microbiome, we're going to identify a lot more things that have an effect on our health. The importance of the other Zeitgebers. The feeding fasting cycle regulates the microbial clock. It's the primary and training cue. However, there are other factors that are important as well. First off, the other Zeitgebers matter. The content and quality of our diet matter. All behaviors connecting the gut axes matter. For example, the gut bone axis. The microbiome can send out molecules that actually increase bone density. However, the primary factor regulating bone density is putting load through the bone, essentially meaning being standing versus sitting. Standing for more of the day, exercising as well, will increase the release of a hormone called osteocalcin from the bone, which regulates gut motility. Other behaviors lay the foundation for the gut as well. Cardiorespiratory fitness, which is also known as VO2 max, predicts the diversity and microbial functions within the gut. And the way this works is microbes speak with our mitochondria via reactive oxygen species. Now, people who have greater cardiorespiratory fitness, they generally have higher performing mitochondria. Therefore, they probably have a much better timing between generating energy and generating free radicals or reactive oxygen species. So healthier mitochondria lead to a higher cardiorespiratory fitness, which leads to better communication between the microbiome and our cells because the communication is going through the mitochondria. Sleep deprivation alters the microbiome and obesity and type 2 diabetes alter the microbiome as well. So we have a lot of things that are really important for getting our microbial clock synced to the rest of our clocks. And we really need to hit home on all of these things. We really need to be on top of all of these factors. Or you're really not going to get the beneficial effects of synchronizing your microbial clock to the rest of your clocks in your body. And you're certainly not going to get what is considered a, an optimal microbiome. Metabolism, synchronizing organ clocks. When we look at this concept of synchronizing the microbial clock to the rest of the clocks in the body, we kind of have to look at it in a two-step process. We have our organ clocks, which include the gut clock, the muscle clock, the brain, et cetera, et cetera. And these are communicating directly with one another. Additionally, we have the microbial clock communicating directly with the gut clock, which is another important concept to get. However, in order for that to work properly, the gut needs to be communicating with all of the other axes in a proper way. Essentially, metabolism is the communication method between the gut clock and all of the other peripheral clocks, such as the liver clock, the brain clock, the muscle clock, the bone clock. 
So if your metabolism is impaired, you can absolutely forget about the gut communicating properly with the other organs in the body, nor the microbial clock communicating properly with the gut clock because they're all out of sync. So correcting metabolism is key to building up a healthy communication between the gut clock and the other peripheral clocks, which will allow the microbiome to kind of talk to the gut as an intermediary to help kind of synchronize all the clocks together. The most important signal we're looking at here is insulin in IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1 signaling. This functions as what is called the food entrainable oscillator, meaning this is the primary signal for all of the peripheral clocks to synchronize with one another. This signaling identifies the feeding slash active period in the body. And it also protects against leaky gut because as I've mentioned previously, the insulin sensitivity, insulin signaling, and hyperglycemia play a role in regulating the leakiness of the gut. So if you have poor metabolism, if you have poor glycemic control, you can absolutely forget about having a healthy gut microbiome interface. Additionally, the appetite hormone leptin regulates the microbiome via antimicrobial protein secretion. So these two kind of couple with one another. Typically, when people are insulin resistant, they generally tend to be leptin resistant as well. And essentially what that means is the signaling from leptin and insulin don't go through. So, you know, for example, leptin is secreted from fat tissue, insulin is secreted from the pancreas. These two clocks will not be communicating properly with the gut. Therefore, the microbial clock cannot be expected to communicate properly with these tissues as well. Another important factor for synchronizing the peripheral clocks is uh, reactive oxygen species, you know, free radicals. These are used to communicate throughout the body. And additionally, even within organ systems for cells to communicate within a single organ system together. So if you're looking at the different types of cells, cells that line the colon, re reactive oxygen species help synchronize all of the cells in the gut. So it's important that if you have a high level of reactive oxygen species, free radicals, that you reduce that. And coincidentally, people with metabolic system, insulin resistance and all that, they generally make more reactive oxygen species, which impairs the communication between all of the peripheral clocks. Additionally, reactive oxygen species in the gut seem to signal to the uh, microbes in the microbiome. So that can also throw off that communication hub as well. Finally, chronic inflammation impairs metabolism throughout the body. So the take home message here is if you have bad metabolism, there's no way you're going to synchronize the microbial clock to the rest of the clocks because you're effectively impairing the ways that the gut and peripheral clocks synchronize with one another since a lot of what the microbiome is doing is communicating to the gut clock as an inter intermediary between itself and the peripheral clocks you need to address metabolism otherwise you're not going to be able to synchronize your microbial clock to the rest of your body the take-home message here is essentially you absolutely need to be doing all of the zeitgebers in order for the microbiome to synchronize with the other clocks Synchronizing the microbiome to the gut clock. In step one, we synchronize the peripheral master and gut clocks with one another, and that's gonna create a synergy that's going to create a healthy gut. But we need more than that. We also need a healthy gut microbiome interface. This healthy gut microbiome interface is crucial to A, regulating the microbiome, both the diversity of the microbiome as well as the individual species and individual functions that each species performs. Additionally, this helps regulate communication between the gut and the microbiome. So now we have the gut and the microbiome communicating with one another and the gut is functioning as an intermediary between the microbiome and the other peripheral clocks as well as the master clock. Additionally, the microbiome will generate microbial metabolites that have direct 
target organ effects. What I mean by this is the microbiome is going to create metabolites such as secondary bile acids that can signal to the muscle and increase metabolism in the muscle. And vice versa, the muscle is creating metabolites that communicates with the gut and helps create a healthy microbiome. And finally, we want to create metabolite rhythms. We don't always want to have high levels of these different metabolites. There should be an ebb and a flow between them throughout the day. And this is what the microbial rhythm is, the different metabolites and functions that are occurring as a product of the time of day. So this makes timing crucial. For example, some metabolites conflict with one another. Hydrogen sulfide is preferentially detoxified in place of metabolizing butyrate because they use the same, sim very similar pathways. So what happens is if we have high levels of hydrogen sulfide, that prevents butyrate from being metabolized, which is a terrible situation for gut health. Additionally, some metabolites depend on one another. For example, some microbes make metabolites that other microbes feed on. And so we build this tremendous microbial community that's synergizing with A, with one another, B, with the gut clock, and C, with the other peripheral clocks within the body. Building a better gut. In this short trailer version of the video, I'm simply going to cover what a healthy colon looks like. We want to focus on the colon because that's where the vast majority of the microbiome resides. However, in the full length feature video available exclusively to circadian retraining program members, I take a six minute dive into what this looks like as well as how we get there. So as you can see, this is a healthy colon. All of the cells in the intestinal epithelium or intestinal barrier are packed tightly together. Those are the peach cells. Interspersed within some of the peach cells are specialized cells, different specialized cells in green. For example, we have the goblet cells which secrete the mucus, and this creates a dense inner mucus layer that bacteria can't inhabit that eventually gives way to a thin outer mucus layer where our microbiome resides. Additionally, we have panis cells that secrete host defense molecules that prevent overgrowth. Additionally, they cause bacteria to clump together in the colon so that they can leave via the feces when we go to the bathroom. But we have a mutualism within the microbiome where certain bacteria are making metabolites that other bacteria use to make other metabolites. So in order to create this, we need what we have here. We need a healthy intestinal epithelium. We need a nice dense inner mucus layer. We need a nice loose outer mucus layer, and we need a lack of inflammation so that all this stays the way it is and promotes a healthy microbiome, promotes a proper mi microbial clock, and additionally produces a proper gut clock. Conclusion. Sinking the microbial clocks can greatly upregulate your overall and gut health. It does this by creating a healthy microbiome, a diverse microbiome that has a lot of different functions. If you're just always feeding yourself a, a garbage diet, you're going to have a relatively low level of diversity and you're not going to have the functions that our gut needs to thrive. Creating this healthy microbiome through synchronizing the microbial clock will affect everything. It certainly builds resilience in the gut, but it's also going to synergize with the other gut axes, the gut bone axes, the gut muscle axis, the gut liver axis, the gut brain axis. Ultimately, by syncing the microbial clock, you're going to build this clock that doesn't belong to you, but that you regulate through your behavior so that it can make you a better, stronger, healthier, less sick individual. It's important to realize that all the Zeitgebers matter probably one of the biggest misconceptions to do with circadian rhythms is that, you know, if you just do a, a, you know, mess with your feeding fasting cycle and play around with light, you can pretty much get away with anything. But that is absolutely incorrect. You need your bone seg sending signals to your gut. You need your brain sending signals to your gut. You need your muscles sending signals to your gut. You need your liver sending signals to your gut. In order to do that, all of the zeitgabbers matter. You can't just pick and choose. You want to build these healthy habits and then improve your microbial clock by tweaking with the things you're eating. Use sinking the microbial clock challenge. As we have done before with the stop leaky gut challenge, we've built a sinking the microbial clock challenge. It's found in the bonus materials folder in the OneDrive. And what we want to use this for is we want to use this to 
really work up slowly. You don't want to just start doing all of the things that I've mentioned earlier today. It's probably going to be way too much stress on your system. So what we want to do is we want to have a scoring system. We want to understand what we're doing and how it's affecting us. We're, there's also symptoms lists that you can put. You want to find out the timings of that. You want to also identify objective measures such as heart rate variability, resting heart rate, continuous glucose monitoring, hemoglobin A1C, and we're going to use this challenge to do that. So you become more effective at improving your gut health by understanding how you're affected by the timing of things, uh, especially things like exercise, feeding, fasting cycle, and light exposure. And as with the other challenges, it's important to point out that you are not just trying to get the highest score possible. You're identifying what your score is based on your current lifestyle and you're trying to gradually improve it over time. That way you are not applying too much stress to the system, which will cause problems. So thank you all very much for going over this syncing the microbial clocks module. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a lot. Take care.